everybody. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Get Ready. I'm pleased to bring you today's guest. I had the great pleasure of reading her book, Instant Pain Relief, and uh, writing a testimony for it because it was so good. So let me tell you a little bit about my guest. Shalini Joshi Yamdagni is an international expert in pain relief. 15 years ago, she was confined to bed indefinitely due to chronic illness and pain. When conventional medical treatments failed to provide relief, Shalini discovered an invaluable tool online called Emotional Freedom Technique, EFT, something you guys have heard a little bit about from uh, my channel, <laughs> also known as tapping. She embarked on a profound healing journey and used EFT to heal herself completely. Since her self-healing, Shalini has strived to equip and empower people around the world with this simple yet powerful tool to free themselves from their pain and live the life they want. Born in India, she now lives in Thailand and has also taught her husband and two children how to tap. Excellent. So glad you're doing that. And welcome to the show, Shalini. Thank you so much, Brad, for having me here. I'm so, so honored. Thank you. Well, it is my pleasure. Uh, we were introduced by our mutual friend, Dr. Joe Vitale. Yes, we were. Yeah. So now in terms of uh, getting ready for our best life, there's an important thing for us to do. And you wrote about in your book an experience that's a great metaphor for <laughs> how important it is to prepare ourselves and uh, let go of the past. <laughs> <laughs> in a very literal way. Why don't you share that story? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, um, so this is a story. Uh, 2014, I was in, um, in Baltimore for a writer's retreat, uh, co-authoring a book with a bunch of other women. And I was on my way back from that retreat. So I was uh, at, the, at the DC airport uh, and on the flight and uh, coming back home to Bangkok. And it was a 15 hour flight and then another six hours from Baltimore, uh, DC to Tokyo, Tokyo to Bangkok. And so I'm sitting on the flight and I needed to take a break, pee break. <laughs> and, <laughs> and As one so, does on a long flight. <laughs> <laughs> so, Actually, it wasn't even that long after the flight, half an hour into the flight. And I, I went for a pee break and, uh, you know, I did my thing and I, I flushed the toilet <laughs> and um, realized that it's not working. So I was really embarrassed. And I said, I can't stand here all day. So I went out <laughs> and I waved to the the air hostess that was standing not too far from me. And I said, there's a problem, the flush doesn't work. And she said, no worries, I'll take care of it. And I quietly walked back to my seat, glad that, <laughs> <laughs> that this would be taken care of. And I was writing some notes, I was alone. I was just, you know, with my, with my little notebook, writing some notes and just integrating my experience uh, that I'd had at, at the retreat. And I don't know how long it was before there was an announcement uh, by the captain of the airplane saying that they had a situation uh, with the <laughs> airplane. <laughs> and it seemed that none of the toilets were working, none of them on the flight. <laughs> the 15 hour <laughs> flight. <laughs> yes, a 15 hour <laughs> flight. And so they said that Unfortunately, somehow the ground staff at the DC airport forgot to offload the septic tanks. And so now the tanks were full and nobody could use the toilet. And so they would have to make an emergency landing somewhere. They were trying to figure that out. <laughs> and that, you know, once because they could not fly, of course. And, uh, you know, so they had to make an emergency landing and they were very sorry and they would get back with an announcement very soon. So I, I hear all these conversations now going on, uh, you know, uh, next to me, like what's really going on? Is this really the problem? And people making doom scenarios out of 
whatever the situation was. And of course I was tapping because I was freaked out too. I've, I've traveled, you know, ever since I was six years old, boarding school, going to India back and forth every on a plane. And I had never ever experienced this situation. So I was tapping, I was calming down and saying, what the heck is this, you know? And then, uh, so after a while, the captain announced that they found a place to land and it was Iceland. <laughs> and <laughs> I'd never been to Iceland. So I'm like, okay. And then, uh, you know, they said they got the green lights to, to make this, this emergency landing in Iceland. And so, you know, I was relieved that at least they found some place to, to, to do this. And after a while, so I get back to my writing and I'm trying to calm myself down and, you know, getting uh, mentally ready to, for this, uh, this change in plans. And I see a lot of fuel, you know, outside my window, like there, th th there's all this fuel flying out. And I said, oh my God, is there some emergency happening again? And after a while, there was an, another announcement by the captain that if you see this white cloud outside your window, it's nothing to worry about. It's just dumping fuel because they cannot land the plane with a full septic tank and a full, because it was just hardly like two hours into the journey. So they cannot land the plane if they don't dump the fuel. So that was unbelievable all that wasted fuel. And then, uh, and so we finally landed uh, after a while and, you know, it was Iceland and I can't even remember the name of the airport. It was a very complicated name and everybody's, you know, we got coupons for food and uh, all of that stuff. And there was so much nervous chatter uh, about like what's really going on and everybody's plans were disrupted and, and uh, you know, all of that. And so I was with my uh, computer, I got myself a coffee and I sat in a corner, I did some tapping to kind of clear all this jittery scattered energy. And then I felt so much lighter about it and I saw the whole humor of it. And I actually wrote a Facebook post, <laughs> which is probably still there on how, you know, my airplane forgot to offload their shit tank. Yeah. And, and <laughs> it was and, too full of yeah <laughs> and i decided you know at the airport because i tapped and i was clear and i was you know i could you could see the other side of it and i said i'm going to write a blog post about this on how not offloading your crap yeah can lead to so many the cost of like it can cost you so heavily Absolutely. in so many ways and even lead you to emergency actions uh, and I could completely relate it to my own journey really because my journey with EFT started because you know I was diagnosed with a, a, a chronic disease because of which I was in chronic pain and I could relate it to this this emergency story because it started with just a pinprick pain in my left rib. You know, when I took a deep breath, there was this pain in my left uh, uh, rib area. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, you know, nothing big deal, it, it'll go away. Uh, so I didn't really do anything about it and went about my life merrily. And then I realized it's not going away and uh, it, it was still there. And so I decided I had to go to the hospital and, 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 and show myself and they diagnosed it, costochondritis, inflammation of a ligament that connects the rib bones and the chest. And, um, and so, yeah, that's how it got started. But no matter, you know, how many medicines I took, uh, nothing was shifting in the pain. But what was happening was that little pin, uh, pinprick pain that started uh, in my left rib was spreading to all over my left rib and then was all on my back and then it was on my right rib area then on my upper back and and this is like mm. months and months of taking medications and you know uh uh doing all kinds of things hot pack uh cold pack rib support neck support because uh there was a time when i couldn't turn my neck 
uh, disp- uh, you know, uh, without having a lot of pain. Right. And I changed a lot of doctors. One of the doctors said, and I'm sure a lot of people who are here in chronic pain may have this experience where they say you were sitting long hours on the computer and which, which was true. I was sitting long hours on the computer and they said, you you know, because your the, the weight of your hand is weighing down on your shoulders and that's the reason. And my doctor told me you should get the, one of those chairs with adjustable hand rests so that, you know, your hand is supported. So I got right. myself, uh, I don't know, $600 chair uh, <laughs> to support my hand. And I thought it made sense logically, but it, that didn't do it either. And eventually uh, nothing, nothing uh, changed. And I think in nine months into this back and forth journey with, uh, with the hospital, I was told to quit my job and be on bed rest indefinitely. And uh, the funny thing is you think you're, you're, you're listening and you're taking actions uh, what I've realized is that I was taking actions. I was regularly going to the hospital. And, I, and the thing is, I kept going to the hospital, even though the symptoms kept getting worse. And, uh, and then emergency action was just, you know, landing on bed rest. And back then, my kids were five and six years old. So perfect time to be on bed rest. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I asked them like, so what's next, what happens next? And they said, well, if nothing improves, then you will have a surgery. And I said, what are the chances of the surgery helping me, you know, get back to my normal life? And they said, there is no guarantee uh, because everybody is different. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And so basically I was on bed rest. Uh, you know, and, and, and it was a very painful place. So uh, I could relate this to this, uh, you know, emergency landing where, and the thing is, uh, what I was not listening to is my body. Yeah. My body was giving me signals with little whispers and, you know, uh, your body speak. And now I say that your pain, uh, you know, your, your pain is a message from your body, it's like a text message from your body saying, hey, something needs looking into. And, and we think, yeah, 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 I'll take the Tylenol, I'll go to the hospital, I get the meds, and that's all great, right? But uh, the conscious way, we want to live consciously, and the, the thing to do is also realize that your body is divine intelligence. It already knows what to do, it knows how to heal itself, it knows how to produce a baby, it knows how to do everything. And something uh, that we are doing is getting in the way and that's the piece that was missing in my healing journey because I did go to the hospital diligently and I did all the things that the doctors suggested but I still didn't heal and it's important to listen to your body's uh, symptoms and those little aches and pains as well uh, they are just uh, letting you know that something within is off balance. Uh, and yeah, so as I started, and actually this started with uh, discovery of EFT, emotional freedom techniques. And when I, well, the story is, you know, I went to a seminar and they said, everything is coming from your thoughts. And uh, I stayed open to it because I was desperate uh, uh, because my kids were small and I just wanted my life back. I wanted to drive my kids to school. I wanted to be able to play with them and go to the swimming pool and swim with them. And I just wanted to be a regular mom to my kids, right. you know? And so I was open to this whole thing. Like my thoughts are creating this. And as I started using EFT back in the day, you know, that Brad, uh, this was, there was only one website, Gary Craig's website, emofree.com. I went to their website. I downloaded uh, their 89 page Man. manual <laughs> and I printed it out. And I, you know, I was looking at, it was, it was overwhelming, but I tried to use the tapping as best as I understood it. And I know I was doing it wrong. And I started, you know, just tapping on different points and trying to follow the text that was written. And I noticed instant, instant shifts in my pain levels. Yeah. And I was 
like this is magic because I was popping in pills, I was putting ointments, I was, uh, you know, with a neck support and a rib belt and nothing was doing anything to shift those pain levels. And so that's how, you know, I realized that my body speaking and it is this emotional stuff that we are carrying. And uh, that's the thing that was, you know, weighing down in my body. And that was what my body was trying to communicate with me. Yeah. <clears throat> and that... as I started to, uh, so, you know, people might be wondering, so what exactly was going on? Like, why did you have this costochondritis? And what, what was the deal? So the thing was that uh, I, you know, the back, back story is that I was stuck at a job where I just, I hated it. I had started it uh, with great excitement. And after five, five years into that journey, I just felt suffocated. I felt like I'm drifting without any meaning, without any purpose. I had become good at what I did, but I didn't like what I did. And I, every time I share this story a lot in the book where I felt like I was suffocated and stifled and just going to the office gave me so much you know, frustration and anxiety. And, uh, but, but the thing was that I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. So I didn't know what was my purpose and I hated where I was. And so I, you know, uh, I was just tolerating pain uh, yeah. and, 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 and I didn't have the confidence and I had very low uh, self-esteem because I didn't know what to do. So I used to beat myself up like, why are you going to quit this job? Because you anyway don't know what to do next. So how do you know the next job you're going to get is going to be better than this one? Right. And, and so there was all this inner critic. And, you know, I have a, I married my childhood sweetheart. I have beautiful kids. And my inner critic would say, you've got it all. Like, why are you complaining about this job? Just tolerate it. Just stay there. You know, you can't have it all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, be grateful for what you have. So I would feel this guilt for wanting more. And, and, and so there's this whole inner tug of war that was going on. And on the surface, if you saw me, I looked, you know, pretty much the way I was, but there was this internal battle. And then I would go home with all this frustration, pour it out on my kids for the littlest of, you know, triggers and then feel like a bad mother. And then there was this guilt and shame and monster you're a monster mother and you're a horrible wife and you don't know what the heck you're doing with your life and you know you're a failure and so there was this never-ending cycle of internal emotional mental spiritual pain yeah. that was at the core of what was you know it, it, your body it, it listened your cells are divine intelligence they're listening every cell in your body is listening and when you're in such a cycle of chronic pain, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, then that eventually weighs down on your body systems, it overloads your systems, it depletes your immunity, and eventually causes pain, physical pain and physical disease. Yeah. And thank God, you know, EFT was a divine gift for me. Uh, in my life. And as I use this tool, I ordered every single uh, uh, video in Gary Craig's uh, video library. And yeah. I would sit with myself and I would listen to the, you know, half of the day, I would just tap along because one of the recommendation was you can just tap along with whoever has pain and you know, the, there's borrowing benefits. Borrowing benefits uh, right? So I would just half the day because my kids would go to school, eight to four o'clock. And I would sit and tap. And the next half of the day, I would study what Gary was doing and what is he doing and what is he saying and what questions is he asking? And then I would apply it to myself. And as I did that, like a maniac, every day, eight to two o'clock, you know, as soon as my kids left, left because I was desperate, right. desperate for change, number one. And I kept seeing results. Like my neck doesn't feel so stiff and my you know, I could see the shifts in my pain levels. And I think after a month of doing this, I could drive my kids to school and I still had some pain. And, you know, so it, it, there was just constant improvement. And uh, 
after two months of doing this, I was completely free from every single pain in my body and I was free wow. from my disease. And um, yeah, so EFT was, you know, such a blessing in my life and uh, I haven't looked back and I tap every single day and, uh, you know, I love your get ready because I think everything I do is about getting ready. Uh, whether, you know, your, your video tap of the morning, I think my kids <laughs> have, have memorized every day we used to tap with your video and I didn't know that I could use tapping this way too, like have right. an intention yeah. and then whatever's in the way, clearing it, it out so that you have a great day. So your video was the first video that made me realize, wow, like I can use it. And so my kids were tapping every day. I intend to have a great day at school and all the worries about the friends and the bullies and, you know, bad grades. And uh, we used to do this. I'm not kidding you from age six, till 19 18 when they when they left for university we did this every single morning right here in this living room we would sit and i would lead them and we would do this tapping so you know i just cannot uh express these 15 years the benefits of just clearing the energy starting uh, of the day and actually then i even took it a step further and i created an ohm list for my family and the OM list is on my mind. Oh, and cool. so what we would do is apart from, you know, the, the, the morning tap uh, that uh, you introduced us to, we would sit every weekend uh, and, and by that table over there, you know, just sitting around and just list all the things that were on our minds, whether it's personal, whether it's friends, whether it's, um, I have tests coming up or, you know, my friend was so rude to me or whatever. It was kind of like a weekly. Uh, All cleanse. the stuff that's getting stuck uh, in the tank. <laughs> yeah. And I would do my list too. Like, oh shit, I forgot to do this. And I still have to do this. I'm so overwhelmed because that was a uh, solopreneur and mom and trying to do everything. So I would have my list and we would tap on, even though I have all these things on my mind and I have no clue how to, you know, uh, how do, what the solutions are, what the answers, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And we would, I didn't know what was on their list. They didn't know what was on my list, but we would do this general tap. And at the end of the tap, there's this, like this energy would, you know, shift. And I would tell them because the list on their list, they would have like item number one is uh, at a level nine and number two is bothering me at a level six and number three, and the good thing was they didn't have to share it. That's why they did it. Cause right. and I wouldn't know what the heck they were worrying about, you know, cause kids don't like to tell their parents everything. And so- <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't noticed that with my kid. <laughs> and so they would really see the benefit. And then they're like, you know, a clarity would come or a sense of calm would come or yeah. even ahas would come. And like, hey, I could do that. Hey, why don't I try this? And we would tear up our list, throw them, and, and off we went. So there was a daily tap and there was a night tap before we went to bed. Uh, and the way I, you know, tweet, you tricked my kids was that I said, you shower every morning, which we do. We have, we're in Thailand. It's really hot here. Yeah. <laughs> and we shower every night. And so I said, this is like a, you know, morning mental, emotional shower and night shower and you just have to clear the energy and i yeah that's uh, and so they grew up uh with tapping interestingly they never took and i'm not suggesting you don't take medications but we never did medications because if they had a headache or if they had a tummy ache or if they had anything we tapped we just tapped and tapped and tapped and and, and the thing is the reasons why they tapped was they saw the results Right. So it wasn't like, I'm trying to trick you into doing something, but they got the results. So even today, just the other day, my son is in New York at, uh, at a university there. And he says, mom, I'm really stressed about this. This is, can we tap? And so they have this tool uh, to help themselves. And then of course, if, this, if it's like tricky and they're not being able to overcome it, uh, they always fall back and come and tap with me. But this come is- Come to the expert. <laughs> 
everyday life. You know, it's, it's, if something comes up, they just immediately start doing that. And I, I feel like as a parent, I could not think of a better gift that I could leave behind for my kids because it's a tool for life. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, what I love is that as you talk about how you were trapped in that job, but you didn't know what else to do and didn't have purpose. Not only did you find what solved the pain for you, but found your purpose at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there were so many times when I was doing the healing the past, you know, and I was healing my past and I said, oh my God, if people had this tool that, you know, you, we wouldn't have to go through so much. And I remember a story that I talk in my, in my book where, you know, I was such a, my son was just four and I was this monster mother because I was so stressed about my job because I wasn't, you know, I, it's like I had no creative juices left and I used to struggle with creating presentations. And I came back one evening and uh, I forced my son to do his homework first so that I could get on and do my, do my work, which was, I had a deadline and I had this big screaming, uh, you know, thing with him and he was so scared and he was crying and I was crying and I felt like, oh my God, you're such a monster. And I just looked at those incidents as I was healing the past. And I said, my God, if I had this tool back then, uh, you know, and, and I really realized the importance of whether you're a parent or you're a school kid going through this or, you know, whatever area of life you're in, uh, it's such a easy, simple, effective, powerful tool that you can use anytime, anywhere. And I could think of a hundred different uh, times when I could have just done this, gotten clear, and the whole experience would have been so different and uh, saved myself and my children and my dear ones so much pain and uh, heartache uh, if I had that tool back then. Yeah. So, um, and we find it when we're, when we find it, we find it when we're ready. And that's the interesting thing about your story is that there is that part of you that, you know, was going through the pain, your, your body was showing you these pain messages, letting you know, and to go back to the, the original story of the tank is full. <laughs> There's stuff that needs to be released. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you know, and that's the thing is we, we, we find it when, when we're ready. I mean, everyone who's watching this has now somehow been introduced to this. So when someone has, uh, is experiencing a chronic illness or a pain, what is the first thing you recommend for them? So, you know, one of the most wonderful things about tapping, because I've been in really intense chronic pain, and what I found really helpful, because when I started, I didn't know all, you know, how to, how to address all these different layers, uh, because chronic pain is not acute pain. It's, it's, it's chronic and it has multiple layers. And so I talk about this in the book about, you know, I, I, I talk about the four layers of chronic pain and I compare it to the ocean. So, you know, it's like when you're surfing uh, at the, on, the, on the waves and then you're snorkeling right under the waves and then you go scuba diving a little bit deeper and then there's the deep sea diving. And so that's how I, you know, saw this chronic pain puzzle as, and so, when I started and when I just learned the basics of EFT, it was so wonderful because I could just tap and say, even though I have this stiffness, you know, I would just notice what the symptoms were in my body uh, in this moment and then just tap on the symptom itself. And so that really helped to manage the, the pain instantly, which was fantastic because then I could get on and do things in the house without all this pain. So if you're in chronic pain, you can learn to manage the pain instantly by just talking about what symptoms you have. So if you have a stiff neck and, 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 and a heaviness on your shoulders, you can just tap, even though I have the stiff neck and heaviness on my shoulders, I deeply and completely love, forgive and accept myself. And just tap on that. And if you do that a couple of times, you'll see, you know, the intensity goes a little bit uh, lower. <clears throat> And then of course, the, the, the snorkeling layer is if you can include 
the emotions you're feeling, right? Because it's not just the pain, you're feeling uh, frustrated because you can't do this and you're feeling limited and, and, and the pain is interfering with your day. So if you include that uh, layer as well, even though I have this chronic pain, uh, and this pain in my neck, and I feel so frustrated because I can't do this and you know, whatever the emotions you're feeling, right. then you've added another little layer to the physical because when you're going to for you know to the medical world they're just addressing the symptom that's right and that's that first layer. It. and that's why a lot of people in chronic pain do not see the lasting relief or not experience the lasting relief and i had actually the pain got worse and worse and worse and worse uh, because we're not addressing the we're triune beings we are mind body spirit and we're just addressing the body on a very superficial level and not going inside and so the second step would be just address how you're feeling about the pain and, and include that in the tapping and then of course the the deeper you know layers what i've found with chronic pain is that the unprocessed you know emotions the unprocessed old intense feelings those deep deeply painful feelings that we never want to look at don't want to talk about <laughs> pretend like it doesn't exist uh, is the other layer and after 15 years of being in this journey and working with a lot of people in chronic pain you know I realized that at the root of chronic uh, pain is anger and if you think about it and I've described this uh, a little bit in the book about you know, all chronic pain uh, has this issue with inflammation. Whatever chronic pain you may have, autoimmune disorder or whatever, costochondritis or any pain, there's an, in, you know, element of inflammation. And uh, I like to see things now after all this experience metaphorically, and it's like holding on to inflamed feelings. Like, why is why is there inflammation? Your body is divine intelligence. It knows what's to do. Right. What is that uh, thing that is causing it to be inflamed? And I have found that anger is a huge, even rage is a huge piece of chronic pain. And I was angry about so many things and resentful and angry and angry at myself and angry at, you know, uh, my... Uh, family because like why you know I, I thought I was supposed to be a singer and you know uh, <laughs> and I was like I was in a boarding school which didn't have any of facility to uh, to have voice training and all of that and I thought my my thing has passed by and now I'm here and I'm stuck at this job and I have nothing uh, you know I don't know what the heck to do and uh, this I'm going to die one day without having done anything meaningful with my life and so there was anger about so many things, anger at myself for not having clarity, anger at myself for being a bad mother, anger at myself for, you know, just so many different things and yeah. could never associate that with chronic pain. And, you know, so, so the other thing is to dive deeper and three core feelings are anger, guilt, and fear. And so once we address these big, deeply painful feelings, then you clear up. It's like the, you know, you clear up this piping system in your, in your body, right? Yeah. And, and the energy is flowing better. So one of the thing, immediate things that I noticed was I could breathe better. That was one of the first uh, things that started happening to me. I'm like, oh my God, I can breathe so deep because I had very shallow breathing, right? And then uh, the, 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 the last layer, you know, is the, the, the deep dive seabed layer. And that is really about addressing the inner childhood uh, wounds. And I, you know, you cannot imagine all those little uh, things that happened as a kid and how they're impacting your everyday life even oh, yeah. in the present. And so why did I want to stay stuck at that, that painful job not only because I didn't know what to do with my life and I didn't have clarity, but I was sent to a boarding school when I was six years old. And my parents were in Thailand. I was sent to a boarding school in India because back then Thailand didn't have international schools, had very like one or two international schools, which were like four hours drive from my 
the place that my dad lived. And so mm. in his best of intentions, he sent me to this wonderful boarding school in India. It's gorgeous at the foothills of the Himalayas. And, uh, you know, I had so much resentment and anger about that. Like, right. uh, I didn't have anybody to guide me and I didn't have uh, somebody to tell me what to do and, you know, to, to hone my interests or my skills. That was one of the things. And then I made a vow to myself that I will never send my kids to a boarding school and I will be the mom that is at home that is there for my kids because my parents could never be there for me. And so I made this little vow. And, and so here I am 38 years old, 15 years ago. And I'm saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go and look for another job because this job, even though it was so painful, it offered me flex time so I could be at home and work. And so my brain said, you'll never find another job who's going to offer you flex time. And I really wanted to be with my kids. So that was all happening. I was with my kids. I had this flex time job, but I was upset all the time. And instead of being a good mom to my kids, I was a monster. <laughs> right. And this is coming from childhood stuff, right. unresolved childhood uh, right. stuff. So there's all these different layers to chronic pain and, uh, you want to work on it step by step. But the amazing thing about tapping is that even if you don't know how to get to the, you know, there is clear strategies on what you can do and how you can step by step address this. And that's what I share in my book, you know, little pieces of how to manage the daily pain, how to manage the daily stress, how to manage, how to heal those deeper painful emotions and how to uh, heal the past and heal those, uh, you know, deeper uh, childhood issues as well. And as I did that, and of course I did a big chunk of it and I was free, <laughs> but you know, a lot of people say, so Shalini, how long do we have to keep tapping? Like, you know, and I love your show, Get Ready. It's like, you know, uh, in a day, we always getting ready. I got ready for your show and I took a shower and you know, I put on a dress and I put on some makeup and made sure my hair was, and that's how I got ready for your show. But that's the thing that people think that getting ready is all about the outer. And really it's about getting ready every single day and making sure, you know, you've showered your mind and you're not carrying the stinky, stenchy, stagnating <laughs> feelings of yesterday and the pissed off stuff from yesterday and, and all that backpack yeah. uh, into this day. Because yeah. all the choices that you're going to make, all the decisions you're going to make is going to be based on all that stuff that you didn't release and clear. And so, you know, I'm getting ready all the time. So I'm a tapping freak. I'm cleaning all the time. Uh, you know, like Dr. Joe's when I bumped into zero limits, that was another aha. Like you're always cleaning because there's always stuff. So even yeah. though I did this big cleanup in 2007, when I discovered EFT, Fast forward 2018, 19, 12 years later, I'm a, I, I was stuck with autoimmune disorder uh, in 2019. Mm. And every single part of my, the left side of my body was in pain. And I was angry at myself. I'm the pain relief expert and what the heck is going on? And of course, you know, I knew exactly what was going on because the year before that, uh, February, my daughter told me something she had never told me before, which was traumatic. It was like an earthquake in my life and it just shook me to the core. And once again, I felt like, oh my God, healing the world. And here's your daughter with this huge secret that, and then how did you miss it? Like you've been tapping every day, you've been cleaning every day, but she didn't share that bit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was like uh, somebody pulled the rug from my, from my, under my feet. And, you know, that same year, uh, three of my best friends, their relationships fell apart and who did they come to? Right. So I was, and this was not a client. This was right. friends, right. childhood friends. And I know their kids and I know their, you know, uh, I know them. 
uh, personally. So it was like a very involved thing. And then a few months later, my dad had a brain stroke. And, uh, you know, there was sandwich, right? Kids and, and my, you know, my daughter was losing hair because of this traumatic thing that was happening in her body. And, and there was just so much going on. I felt contracted and I was angry at everybody. I was angry at my daughter. I was angry at my friends. I was angry that everybody's coming to me. And I just wanted to sit in a corner, crawl and just shut my ears and say, please don't tell me anything else. You know, it was just- the Tank is full, I can't take anymore. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. And my yeah. body was contracting. My heart was contracting. My spirit was contracting. And lo and behold, uh, surprise, surprise, I have autoimmune you know, rheumatoid arthritis and I was turning 50 and, uh, you know, my son had left for university. So a little bit of an empty nest going on and just everything packed into one. And so, you know, people, if you Google, uh, you know, autoimmune disease and, 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 and look at those basic answers that you get that can you heal autoimmune disease? They say, no, you can manage the symptoms a little bit, control it a little bit but I'm here, you know, and, and, and so what I had to do once again, uh, getting ready, right. It, it never ends. So I had to go back. I started journaling. I started doing Facebook lives about it and how uh, trying to understand what is the left side of the body all about? Cause I've read so many books already on chakra diagnosis and, you know, healing and all kinds of, so I was using every information I could to, to come back to myself. And first of all, get rid of the anger at myself. Like, how did you let this happen to you? Right, right, right. Shame on you, pain relief expert. You know, <laughs> this, is, this is what you've done to yourself again. And then once I was past releasing that anger at myself, I said, okay, my body doesn't lie. Uh, and it's screaming. I've got to pay attention. So I paused my life. I didn't do anything the first half of 2019. No clients, no nothing. I just took time to listen to myself and say, okay, you're hurting and you know, journaling was so helpful. Uh, I meditate as well, so that was very helpful. And just realizing there was rage about what had happened to my daughter. There was rage about so many things. There was anger, there was resentment. And as I went back, uh, you know, biting the bitter pill and you know, doing what I tell others to do, uh, within three months, I was free of every single, because when I was, when I had the autoimmune, you know, I couldn't lift my hand. I couldn't tie a ponytail. I couldn't hold my phone like this for more than one or two minutes. Cause my, I had pain in every, every mm. single joint in my hand, in my legs, in my feet. And I was free of all of it. And I remember in 2019, uh, meeting Dr. Joe, because we were already friends back then, and he had already invited me twice to speak on stage, and I was going to leave my son in New York, and he said, I'm going to be in New York too, so he invited me for breakfast at the Peninsula, New York, and and I was just sharing the story that I was going to do, uh, you know, I was thinking about writing a book, and how I had just healed myself again from this chronic pain, and I think that was the time uh, uh, you know, he encouraged me so much that you must write this book. And I think that second time when I healed myself from my autoimmune disorder was when, when I was really clear that I really need to share this. Uh, and uh, at some point, maybe I want to talk about, you know, women and 50 plus and all these things that we think is coming because of age. And uh, <clears throat> But that was the inspiration to say, okay, let's begin with writing first a book about just healing chronic pain and we'll move on to this other thing later. But that was my big inspiration because it worked and it worked and it worked. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I know and it it's worked. And it's applicable to so many other areas mm -hmm. of life, even, even as it is having read the book that you can take so many other things beyond just physical pain and and use what you talk about in there so that's you know thank you for writing that book and thank you for doing the work that you're doing thank you for uh you know finding your purpose um hopefully you won't have to go through another uh big illness to move you to the next level and i think you've you've done that now <laughs> um 
and uh, and thank you for sharing this with my audience today. Thank you so much for having me here. You've been a big inspiration in my life. So I'm so glad that Dr. Joe connected us and here I get to be, uh, you know, with an idol and, and share my journey. So thank you so much, Brad. Thank you.